my darlings, this is Rowan. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. If you're returning, I'm glad you have decided to come back. And here we are with more of home. And where we last left off, we finally got to the house. So let's go continue forward. Okay, my laptop had been left on and only had a tiny bit of power left. On the screen was a website about an old about the old water tower. There was a key in the top of the drawer of my desk. Did I take it? Yes, we took it. I pocketed the key. Okay, my laptop was warm. It had been running for a while. Okay, there's nothing else in this room, so we got a key. That's good. And I think there was uh, another door. Yes, there was. Okay. The books there were half mine, half Rachel's. Hey, now that I looked more closely, it looked like the man in that house had some of the same books as I did. Sorry if you hear some scratching in the background. It's my cat trying to get in the room. One book in particular seemed a bit odd. I remembered owning it, but not that edition. Hmm. There was a suitcase on the bed. Was it Rachel's? I remembered it from the uh, room. Was it Rachel's? I remembered it from that trip we took out west. Bleh. To open the suitcase, yes, she did. Wasn't sure what to make of the suitcase contents. Inside were a few days' worth of clothes, some toiletries, and a train ticket. I checked the date and time. It matched the receipt I found back in those horrible sewers. What was this? Rachel, who were you running away with? She was running away with Norman. This wasn't getting me anywhere. No, it was not. And I don't know how long the episode's going to be. Because I'm thinking we're nearing the end, guys. Okay, and we check those. Oh, the basement. I unlocked the basement door. Oh, goodness. There were old Christmas decorations in the box. I couldn't even remember our last Christmas. There was the uh, blah blah blah. The garbage bags were stuffed with old paint cans and, and supplies. There was a dirty old key here. Did I take the key? Yes, you took the key. I took the small key and tried to remember what it unlocked. I looked. No, uh, looked like there was plaster and an old trowel in here too. Oh my god. There were old clothes, tools, and other things. Obviously, we obviously hadn't thrown out yet. We had way too much junk. Yeah, you did, buddy. Okay, I'd put up this divider wall last summer so we could create a separate room in the basement. I hadn't finished yet so the door was stuck and the drywall was poorly installed. I might have been able to break through if I found something heavy enough. Okay, so we gotta go look for something heavy. Oh man. The front door is locked. And I don't think it's going to let us back out. Okay, yep. Oh, goodness. Okay, the grabbing key I found in the basement and locked the door. It looked like the room had been tossed around. The furniture was a mess. Did somebody break in here? There was an old crowbar on the floor. Did I need to take the crowbar? Yes, you take the crowbar. I left the heavy crowbar and appreciated its weight. Oh my god. Did we wall her in there? Is this telltale heart kind of shit? I guess we will go find out. Oh, goody, goody, good, goody gumdrops. Okay, yeah, there's nothing over there. It really does have good sounds, though. Okay, Dad, break through the wall with the old crowbar. Yes, you did. With a heave, I swung the crowbar at the wall. I smashed a hole large enough to step through. As I stepped through the broken wall, my breath caught in my throat. This was it. Was Rachel down here? Was she okay? Probably not. Don't look. Oh, goodness. Oh, don't look. Yeah, we're going to keep looking, buddy. A filthy-looking pile of rags had been dumped in the corner. The stench of them was awful. made my eyes water. I was terrified to even touch the pile to see what lay within, but I knew I had to. I had come this far. 
after all this searching, after all I had seen, when I looked with it, when I looked within the rags, did I finally find my Rachel? I oh no, my hands trembled as I pulled back the layers of cloth. There, at the center, it was all the dirt and mess. Was under all the dirt and mess was my beloved, my Rachel. Her arms were bruised all over and slashed repeatedly. Her clothes were ripped and torn, and even through all that sickening blood, it was obvious she had been stabbed to death. The knife I'd carried all the way suddenly seemed like a poison. What happened to Rachel? Who did this to you? I thought about Allied scene and wondered if any of it could help me figure out who done this. When I couldn't stay, and when I couldn't stay there any longer, I stepped away on shaky legs and I made my way back upstairs. Reluctantly, exhausted from my journey, I could no longer resist the urge to close my eyes. Okay, maybe I would use some of Rachel's travel books to find some place to go. No matter what, I needed some kind of escape. What? Okay. It was my wallet and with its contents intact. Either I dropped that stuff or somebody else did. Maybe I was sleepwalking in or maybe somebody stole it from me. Norman's store, that forest, the water tower. Was there other places before? I didn't see how it could have happened any other way. I must... Okay, it must have been the one to lose my wallet and its contents. But what does that mean? Okay. There. That was decided. Oh, goodness. I think we killed Rachel and Norman. Okay. There's an old photo of that other man and his wife, I assumed. I found it. Okay. I found it in that house. I recall those faded remains I had found deep underneath his house. What had he done there? Well, what did I... Okay. What did I think? Was the man involved with this whole mess somehow? Hmm. I don't think so. Wasn't sure, but the poor old bastard was good and dead. He was a victim, not a criminal. Okay, but who had killed him? I don't know. Within the few broken pieces that remained of that mirror, I could see my face had grown pale and weak. I couldn't bear to look again. It was like I didn't actually expect a reflection. I felt empty and drained. The reflection in that grimy glass was only a shadow of a whisper. Okay, the quiet in that room unnerved me terribly. I still love that old-time charm of the clawed foot bathtub, even though it seemed like a cold comfort then. Oh my goodness, let's go... I guess we will go back down to Rachel's body? Should probably recheck the rooms, just in case there's anything new. Okay, it's the letter I had taken from the post box. Who had it out for Norman? Who sent him that letter? It must have been someone from the neighborhood, or at least somebody wanted it, wanted it to look that way. I wasn't sure what to think. Did Norman... Did he murder Rachel? No way. Norman had ended up dead himself. Whoever sent that threatening letter must have gotten to him. But who the hell was that? And I'm making these selections, guys. From now on, I'd have no one to get angry with me for stupid things like buying this TV. Just thinking about these things made me mad, or made me sick with grief. Bleh. My brain's just making up shit and... Oh, goodness. Okay, my old office safe sat on the floor. I used to keep tax records and other important documents in it. I used a digital passcode lock, but I didn't have the code. Maybe I had left it somewhere. I leafed through the notebook I had taken from the forest. Where were the names that had been written down? Heather, Olivia, Ashley, Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose, Rachel. I recall the names scratched out on that old desk deep within those musty tunnels. Was this the man? Was the man in that house really up to something? Was he the one responsible for Rachel's murder? But I had found him dead. Yes, you did. Okay, we needed the code to get in there. Oh, okay. The mail still sat there, heaped on the floor. How long had Rachel been lying in the basement? It seemed like the mail had been there for a while. 
Okie dokies. Okay, there would be no more dinners here, no more chit chat over breakfast. At least not for us. I couldn't recall when I had ate last ate, but I wasn't hungry in the least. And okay, I must have locked the door. There was no reason to return to the backyard anyways. Okay. Um so I think we gotta go back up to the to the second third floor. Get the code. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's the key card I found in the factory, the one that allowed me to slip through that door. It seemed to me that it was probably Norman's, but if that was true, what was he doing back at the plant? Did I think Norman was going back to the factory? No, somebody else was using that locker, but who? I had made up my mind. My laptop was dead, but I found some notes in loose paper in the drawer where I had found the key. There was a yellow sticky note with an eight-digit code on it. Did I take it? Yes. The code looked like it might be for the safe. What kind of phrase was that? Klaatu Varakta Niktu. I don't know. And the locker was on this. Oh, the safe was on the, this floor, I think. I have got shit memory, guys. Shit memory. The code I found should have let me access. Should let me access the safe. Did I try to open it? Yes. The code worked. I pulled open the small safe door and peered inside. There was a photo in there of Rachel and I when we first moved to town. In it, we're, we were smiling outside the front of the house, which looked like a real mess. We looked happy, though. Odd, I couldn't remember who took that photo. In the side, the safe was also an envelope. The front of it read, Do not open until I tell you. I guess this was as good a time as any to see what was inside. Did I open the envelope and read what was inside? Yes. I tore open the envelope and removed yellow lined paper inside. On it was a letter written in hand that looked familiar. The letter read, I know this whole event has probably been pretty difficult. You can't seem, you can't imagine how hard it has been for me too. Well, maybe you can, but uh, that isn't meant to be an excuse, but well, I hope you can better understand why I've done what I've done. Moving to this town seemed like such a dream, a quiet place to get established, to live out our lives and to be together. But you know as well as I do that things changed. Things quickly changed. Your drinking was one thing, but as you grew more distant, you retreated into that world of yours. Well, it was clear you didn't need me as such. In fact, maybe you never needed me at all. But I took, but it took all this to make you realize. In the end, though, you may never forgive me for this. You may never forgive yourself, but this is probably for the best. You'll be healthier for this. I'm just sorry it had to happen this way. Rachel. Shit. Okay. Yes, yeah, so Rachel was leaving us. Shit. It seemed like I'd seen all... Okay, it seems like I'd seen all there was. Maybe I thought I was ready to go back into the basement. Oh, goodness. Maybe there wouldn't be anything for me to find. I had to take a last look. Oh, goodness. If I was guilty, I could take this... No, I could take this to a warm, safe place and do something about it. I pick up my knife. Yes, I take the knife, and I kept it firmly in hand. Now that I stood there, I realized I couldn't go back into that room again. I had already seen too much. I need to put it into the situation one way or the other. Oh goodness. Okie dokies. I knew to escape that nightmare, but what about the knife I still carried? I wondered, even if I left, it wouldn't really be over. So do I leave the house forever? Shit. No. Peer at the knife as I turned away. A warm place, I thought. Where could that be? And um, the bathtub. We like the bathtub. The old clawfoot bathtub had been cleaned nearly enough. Still, it would probably do. 
If I wanted to, I could use that knife to finally end this. The question is, where did I think I deserved it? Did I? Was this my fault? Did I deserve to die? Shit. Oh, these questions. Yes. Living in this town hadn't been easy. The plant had helped in some ways to stay grounded. It kept me in line, gave me something to do, and helped me get away from my past. Even when the factory when the factory closed, everything changed. I guess that's when I started to, started sleepwalking, disappearing for the for hours at a time. I had MRIs and positive doctor's reports, but nothing seemed to help, not even drinking. But I swear I had tried to give it up. I know it. The sleepwalk never really went away, though. But I know Rachel had tried. I know she had tried to be there for me when everything was falling apart. That night I had heard terrible truths, but I knew it was a final act of a long-standing horror I'd been living. Waking up in that house tonight was the final cruelty. I wish I'd remained unconscious in that room forever. I wasn't sure what I had, what had happened to the other man I had found in that house. He seemed to me more a victim, but what was his role in all this? After making it out of those tunnels, I thought the sewers might feel safer. I was wrong. The security tape I had watched some showed someone being attacked by what looked like two people. But who was it that was attacked? I had found the contents of my wallet scattered through town. Why the hell had I been out there anyway? My sleepwalk Had my sleepwalking gone to some new extreme? I thought that I couldn't account for my whereabouts. But I knew I had been to that forest. And even Norman's place. Well, it was terrifying. I didn't know what that meant. But at least I had recovered my things, hopefully. Though, hopefully, I thought that I would cover my tracks so I wouldn't be blamed for all this. Deep within those woods, though, there were things that became truly awful. Finding that notebook only made things worse. Rachel's name had been on the list. So what was the ter what terrible plot was she a part of? Was this okay, there was a similar list of names on that desk back in those tunnels. What was the connection? Whatever happened, I knew at least that Norman wasn't going wasn't the one who kept going back to that factory. I hoped it meant that he had nothing to do with that guard's violent end. But who had been rooting through those lockers or drinking in that boarded up room? After the factory I thought I might find some solace if I could just get to Norman's store. But all I had found were more horrors and more questions. Now that I really considered it, it's when I should have seen it coming. Damn, Norman. How did you get mixed up in all this? I know you weren't a perfect net. man. None of us are. But you didn't deserve this. Maybe who had ever done you in was responsible for that other murder that happened in this town. At the, ve at the very least, I was convinced you and Rachel were killed by the same person. I sincerely hoped you would find some peace, my friend. I knew I never would. When I had marched through the rain towards home, desperately, I desperately clung to the hope that this would end. And I guess in a way it did. But how could I have known how hopeless it all was? I had started to feel as disoriented as when I sleepwalked. To think of it now. Our house used to feel so lively, so warm. But coming into the kitchen, it felt only cold, empty tension. Every terrible thought I had up to that point was suddenly a possibility. Nothing could have prepared me. My wife, dead, ruined, discarded. Rachel's death was a terrible mystery to me, one that would haunt me forever, unless I did something about it. For what solace can a man take in the death of his wife? What comfort can be offered? Rachel had been taken from me, and I might never know why. I put the knife down and drew a long, warm bath. Slipping into the water, I was surprised how calm I felt. I heard it was like going to sleep, if you did it right. So I held my arms under the water after I, as I made the incisions. Through the initial sting came a shock. It was only a matter of minutes before I felt myself ebb and fade. After that, the room washed to a calming, comforting shade of gray. Hmm. Maybe I should have just left and not killed myself. Hmm. Wow. That was dark shit. That was some dark shit. I think I should have left. But, you know, you make your decisions, you live with them. And that was my decision. And that was Home. A short horror adventure. And, yeah. I really don't know what to say. <laughs> to my wife, Nancy, watch your back. 
that's kind of sad and scary. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, but it was really good. It was really good. <coughs> oh, why am I coughing now? Anywho, I was home, and it was good. It was some dark shit. I probably should have left, but that was good. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who supported the channel and everybody who's watched and supported these videos. I really do appreciate it. If you are enjoying this channel, enjoying these videos, likes, favorites, shares, they help out small YouTubers like myself. If you would like to leave a comment in the comment section, go right on ahead. I'm happy to answer them all, the good, the bad, the ugly. From the channel page home, you can find a link over to the Facebook page. And feel free to leave me a message if you want to. Again, I am always happy to chatter with new people. And on that note, I am going to uh, go ahead and stop this. So thank you guys, and I love you, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye. So